Well, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. And we want to welcome everybody to our online worship experience, our e-church, our virtual church audience. Uh, we don't believe it's by chance that you're here today, but we do believe that God will have a word for you today. We thank you that, that you've tuned in today. We know that there are many other platforms you could be on right now, but you've chosen to be here today. And so we thank God for you. At this time, we want to welcome all of our Spirit of Fire Nation here. We thank God for you guys. We love you. We appreciate you. On behalf of Pastor Raquel and myself, we just want to say thank you for your continued support and love. Intercessors, I know you're praying. I can feel your prayers. Thank God for you. All of those who are serving, all those who are helping to get the vision accomplished, we thank God for you. For all of our first timers, we want to welcome all of our first time visitors here with us today. We thank God for you showing up today, and we believe that God is going to share something with you that's going to be a blessing to your life. So at this time, what I'd like to do is for everybody to share right now. Share. Share this. Listen, if it's good to you, share it with somebody else. I think it's vitally important as a member, as a partner of this ministry, that you share what it is that God is doing with us, through us, and in us to get the message out, to get the gospel out to others. So invite somebody to come in, tell somebody, invite somebody to come to church today virtually and tell them even from the comfort, <clears throat> excuse me, of their own homes that they can tune in today and they'll get a word that'll be a blessing to their lives. And so I want to pray over you guys today. I want to bless you and I want to declare God's favor upon you. And I want to um, take this time. We used to do this all the time um, when we first started the ministry. And this morning I thought about it and I said, you know what? I think I'm going to do this again today. I'm going to go ahead. I want us to begin to declare the favor of God over our lives. How many of y'all could use some favor? Favor is God now um, raising up people to use their power, resources, and influence to assist us and to help us in any and every endeavor. And I believe that God has something special in store for you today. I believe that God wants to show you his miraculous favor. I believe right now because the Bible declares this, whatsoever things you shall say, doubt not in your heart, but believe that those things which you say shall come to pass, you shall have whatsoever you say. I know there are times, myself included, I know there are times where you feel pressure from situations and you know, wait a minute, God, if you don't show me your favor, I don't know how I'll handle this particular situation. You have to show up. And so now I'm going to trust in you. I'm going to depend on you. And the way that we begin to start to release this power is through our confession. It's through the portal of our tongue, our mouth. The Bible talks about the tongue being the pen of a ready writer, documenting on our heart. So even as we begin to speak this, I want you to believe what you're speaking is going to come to pass. Amen. So I want you to repeat this after me. Some of you have it. Um, I don't know if we have it on our website or not, but we'll eventually we'll put it up if we have to. But I want you to make this confession of your faith right now. I want you to say this. Say, Father, thank you for making me righteous and accept it through the blood of Jesus. Because of that, I am blessed and highly favored by you. I am the object of your affection. Your favor surrounds me as a shield. And the first thing that people come into contact with is my favor shield. Thank you that I have favor with you and man today. All day long, every day, people go out of their way to bless me and to help me. Say I have favor with everyone that I deal with on a daily basis. Doors that were once closed are now open for me. Say, I receive preferential treatment and I have special privileges. I'm God's favorite child. Say, no good thing will he withhold from me because of God's favor on my life. My enemies cannot triumph over me. Say, I have, I have, I have supernatural increase and promotion 
and I declare restoration of everything that the devil has stolen from me. Listen, that can be time, that can be strength, that can be resources, that can be whatever stuff, possessions. Listen, you are placing a demand for restoration to take place. Scripture says if the thief be found, then he has to restore unto you seven times greater than what he took and stole from you. And so we're recognizing, we are believing for a sevenfold recompense of everything that's been damaged, lost, destroyed, stolen of any kind. Now I want you to say this, say I have honor in the midst of my adversaries and an increase of assets, especially in real estate and an expansion of territory because I'm highly favored by God. I experience great victories, <clears throat> supernatural turnarounds and miraculous breakthroughs in the midst of great impossibilities. Say, I receive, I receive recognition, prominence and honor. Say, even ungodly authorities grant petitions unto me. Say, policies, rules, regulations, laws, hearts, minds, and decisions are changed and reversed on my behalf. Say I win battles. I don't even have to fight because God fights them for me. Say this is the day, the set time and the designated moment for me to experience the free favors of God that profusely and lavishly abound on my behalf. Say I believe it. I receive it and I have it now in Jesus name. Amen. Now I want you to begin to thank God. Father, we thank you for these words, not just being idle words. We thank you that they come to pass in our lives in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And amen. All right. Now intercessors, I want y'all praying. I want this. I want y'all engaged. I want everybody engaged today. We're continuing dealing with our series on the kingdom within, understanding the power of the inward man, understanding the, the authority that we have, the power, the ability to walk in this kingdom grace that God has given unto us. And so I want to have a word of prayer. We're going to get started with this today. And I'm believing that something will be shared that's going to impact you, that's going to challenge you, that's going to charge you, and that's going to bring insight and revelation to you. Father, we just thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak through my vocal cords, think through my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge, and good understanding. We do approach the holy written word reverently, and we thank you right now for insight right now. We give you praise for it. We pray that every ear is anointed to hear, every heart is open and ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. We bless you and we thank you for it. We magnify you for it. We cover the gifts of the spirit to be in operation and demonstration as needed to support this vision, to support the thing that you desire for us to do. Now, Father, I just ask right now that you begin to comfort and strengthen your people like never before. We thank you for confidence in the faith, confidence in your word. And we give you praise. We give you glory. We thank you for the spirit of might that strengthens them inwardly and outwardly as well. And so we bless you and we draw on your spirit. We draw on the anointing that removes every burden and destroys every yoke. We bless you. And we thank you for it now in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. I want you to go to the book of Ezekiel chapter 36. Um, I want to start here today. Um, I've been <laughs> trying to get through these things, but just the insight, the revelation, things that have been hitting and coming to us as, as I've been ministering things that the Holy spirit has been sharing. Even when we are talking about the kingdom of God and we're hearing 
a lot more talk about the kingdom now. We're hearing about the kingdom of God being God's method of operation in its basic definition of how God does things, how he operates. And even when Jesus came, Jesus constantly preached the kingdom of how the kingdom is. The kingdom is likened unto this. The kingdom is as if a man does this. And so we want to begin to dig in to see what are these laws, these principles, these keys of the kingdom that we need to begin to function and operate in so that we can begin to produce this life. Now, there may be some of you that may say, hey, I want to live this life that's always been preached to me, talked to me about. And there's so much involved when we talk about navigating through life and when stuff comes up, how do you handle it when stuff hits you? That listen, we understand number one that we got to learn how to walk by faith. We got listen. Faith is the currency of the kingdom of God. When Jesus was talking about in Matthew six thirty three, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Talking about don't worry about what you're gonna eat, what you're gonna wear, where you're gonna live, and and. It's like a lot of people are so consumed about those things. And I understand sometimes it's hard to focus when you don't have anything to eat and your children are crying out or they don't have enough money. You don't have enough money to do this or you don't have enough time to do this or something has hit your body. And now all of a sudden your energy is under attack. Your physical body is under attack, which now uh, it, 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 it affects you spiritually. And so now you can be crying out to God, God, I need something to happen now. I need breakthrough now. I need a change now. But he says, I need for you to seek first my kingdom. Seek first how I say to do it. Seek first. And so we got we to gotta understand what is it that we need to do as kingdom citizens or how does God want us to start this thing off? How do, does he want us to maintain it? What does he want us to do? And we need to function in that. I think it's going to be vitally important that we understand this. And now also not only with faith, because faith worketh by love, you got to understand that your love walk is going to be vital. It's going to be crucial to you now operating by faith. See, faith is the great activator, but love is the great motivator. So you got to be motivated by love. Faith is the great activator. You might need to write that down. Love is the great motivator. See, now we receive everything in the kingdom of God by faith, but it's still motivated by love. Jesus said it like this in Matthew 22, I believe that he says, I want you. He says a new commandment that I give unto you, that you love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul and strength and your mind. And then you the second is like unto it that you love your neighbor as yourself. And on these two laws or these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So everything hinders and hangs on us developing in love. I know sometimes we got to be reminded of that because it's real easy in this day and time for our love to wax cold. Scripture prophesies about that. It talks about the love of God, the love in people's heart waxing cold. And we see it today like never before. And sometimes we have to check ourselves in how we do things. Sometimes just sitting, you know, having a sarcastic tone or how we talk about people and make fun of people and make jokes and crack. And sometimes if we don't watch it, we can turn into having a critical spirit and not realizing that's hindering things from happening within us and for us, because if we're not walking in love, it's going to hinder our faith. And so we got to make sure number one, understanding that God loves us. Number two, understanding that, okay, if God loves me with this unconditional love and this love has been shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Ghost, according to Romans 5, 5, that I need to develop in this, which is that primary fruit of the spirit It's the first fruit of the spirit mentioned in Galatians 5, 22. And so love to me, once you look at it, all of the other fruits is a derivative of even the love of God. And so now as you function in this love and we begin to work on this love, then it's easier to understand how much God loves you. Then if you focus on how much God loves you, then you'll realize he'll take care of you. And so now it'll build your trust in God, which now supports your faith to say, OK, from the point of I believe I receive it to there it is. I'm going to make sure I keep my heart right before God and towards people and not let anything. He says, shall anything separate us from the love of God? You got to remind yourself that God loves you. So I want you to say, say that to yourself. Say, God loves me. God loves me. 
God loves me. And so because he loves me, he's going to take care of me. He's going to watch over his word to perform it. He's not going to leave me hanging. God loves me. And now I'm going to practice and exercise that same love that he shows me. I'm going to show it to others. So it's going to be hard to have an unforgiving heart when you walk in in love. You're going to forgive people quicker. You're going to have QRT, quick recovery time. When stuff happens, you don't stay there. You don't stay stuck in the mud or stay stuck in your feelings or stay stuck in an emotional state where now you can't trust nobody. And because somebody did you wrong, now everybody an enemy. You know, we shout when people preach about having haters. That's right. That's right. They hating. Listen, sometimes everybody, some people ain't even thinking about you right now. They live in their own life. And what Satan is trying to make you do is to get into your own head to get you stuck in a place and once he has you stuck mentally, he'll keep you stuck physically. And so now I declare a freedom in your mind today, like never before, that you're going to come out of that past stuff. God is going to listen. Satan has been trying to hound you with mistakes of the past, but the joy of the Lord is going to shine forth in your life. And so I decree that to you now that great joy is coming into your home that while you going from, I believe I receive it to there it is. I feel my help coming on me now. Yeah. Y'all praying. I sense it. I sense it. Listen from, I believe I receive it to there it is. I make a decision. I choose joy. I declare that the oil of joy is upon me. The anointing of joy is upon me. I declare laughter over your life today. Stop being stressed out. Stop being worried about stuff. He said, if I did it before, I'll do it again. Stop looking at what other people are doing. And he says, focus on me. Give your attention to my word and watch me. I have promised you acceleration and I will perform it if you believe me, but you got to cooperate with me, says the Lord. I need for you to begin to do what I've been telling you to do and rest in the fact that if you did what I told you to do, that I'll honor my part. And because you've honored your part, I'm going to show up and fight your battles for you. Stop defending yourself. God wants to make your name great. He promised it to Abraham and you are his seed and heirs according to the promise. So if his name was great, I declare your name is great. And whatever got to happen in order for that to take place, God says, I'm working on your character now because I'm working on your character to get you to the place of promise and prominence of promise and prominence. What I told you, and I'm going to elevate you in the eyes of people because you've humbled yourself before me and submitted yourself to what I'm telling you to do. And when I tell you to get things right, get it right. When I tell you to bless somebody, bless them. When I tell you to be quick to forgive them, forgive them. I know that you have a right you might have a legal right to do things. Some of you need to drop some of those lawsuits you got against people. Listen, it ain't even worth it. Scripture talks about, listen, it's, 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 a, it's a shameful thing for Christians to go to a secular world to solve issues between them. He says, you got to learn how to work things out one with another. Go to your brother. Go to your sister. He said, work it out. He says, if they don't even receive it, go get two other witnesses. If they don't receive again, bring it before the church. But God says stuff in the church need to be handled by the church because now you know how to function in my laws and my kingdom and my system and the laws in the kingdom and the system of God are higher than the laws in this present world. And I'm telling you now it's time for you to be begin to move forward in this. Okay. Whoever that was for, I don't know where I went with that, but I, somebody needed to hear that. Somebody needed to hear it's time for restoration. It's time for a sevenfold recompense. Now where I started up, where I finished last week, I was dealing with, um, building and building from a place of no matter where you are, no matter how dilapidated the thing is that whatever is torn down can be brought back to life. All you need is the right strategy. All you need is the right thing happening. God will begin to reveal to you the things that you need to do as you seek him, as you seek his face, as you seek his wisdom, he'll begin to show you the things that you need to do to begin to turn around and transform things. And I know that the, the crowd, somebody saying, God, what is it? What is it? What is it? Some things that are secret belong to him, but the things that are revealed belong to us. And so God will reveal to you whatever it is you need to know at the time that you need to know it. But in the meantime, do the things. And in between time, you need to begin to do the things that you know you're supposed to do. 
the things of walking by faith, sowing and reaping, getting your house in order, making sure that you be honorable and have integrity in how you're functioning and dealing with people and situations, because these things can hinder the kingdom of God from working. Even the scripture talks about in Corinthians when it deals with those that are whoremongers, those that are idolaters, those that are functioning in all these different perversions and sins shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So it'll disrupt the system by which we're supposed to function in because of how we live. So our living and our lifestyle has a part to play in it also. So we can't, we got to have full counsel of the word of God to understand God. I don't want anything hindering or blocking my advancement. So God revealed to me, number one, what, what, what I'm, is there anything I'm doing to hinder myself from moving forward? What is it that I'm doing? Is it something I'm neglecting? Is it something that I'm not, am I not being diligent of? Because the diligence shall bear a rule. He said a lazy man is not going to inherit anything because you're not functioning in what you're supposed to be doing. So begin to say, God says, listen, okay, let me tell you, because there's so much race in there. Remember the word of the Lord. Remember the system strategies and structure. Remember the word of discipline. That discipline is going to bring consistency. Consistency is going to cause the breakthrough. There's going to be a consistency that God is demanding now for you to consistently spend time in prayer, consistently making your confessions, consistently sowing, consistently giving, consistently saying, okay, God, I'm going to walk in this thing. I'm going to work effectively. I'm going to strategize and I'm going to structure and I'm going to meet this goal. I'm going to meet this objective and I'm going to see it get done this year. Okay. I, okay. Let me, let me share this. There's going to be a thing where, huh? Some of you are, are, are thinking about and focusing on many things. If you lock in and start even focusing on the one thing, the two things, and he says, get those accomplished, it's going to cause a breakthrough in other areas because you're going to see the fruitfulness, the, the fruitfulness, the productivity of you being disciplined and diligent in an area and seeing the transformation, which will cause a domino effect in other areas. So now I need for you to lock in to the thing that God is telling you to do now. Lock into it and begin to work on it systematically, 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 systematically. The days you feel like doing it and the days you don't feel like doing it systematically systematically spend the time get up in the morning or at night whatever time works best for you and go before god systematically systematically you begin it systematically little by yes i'm trying to stay in in english systematically 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 regimentation regimentation some days you're tired when you get up but systematically Sometimes you're going to have to force yourself out of bed. Set the alarm clock across the room so you get out of the bed to, to stop it. That way you up already. Systematically. Whether it's eliminating stuff out of your diet and beginning to introduce new things. Systematically. Beginning to stop spending as much as you've been spending. Begin to buckle down and tighten up a little bit. Increase in your giving and begin to decrease in even in your spending. And begin to structure and increase in your savings and your investments. Beginning to build. Even, um, oh man, what, what, what's, the, what's this book? It's a book um, by a guy by the name of David Bach called The Automatic Millionaire. And in that book, it talks about the latte factor. It talks about sometimes stuff that you spent money on, coffee and lattes every day, that money could begin to go to different places of investment to build. And before you know it, over a year's time, you've already built a nice nest egg, just eliminating one simple thing. Sometimes we think the breakthrough is in the grand gesture, but sometimes it's in the simple act of obedience in small areas that causes growth and development. And God is going to bring a quantum leap to your faith. And all of a sudden now there's going to be a time where you will, it'll be a time where it'll seem steady. And, and, and what's the word for some of you, it might seem mundane because you're doing it constantly consistently, but all of a sudden there'll be a spurt of growth. There'll be a spike of increase and there'll be a thing where there'll be a leap where stuff that would have taken you years. Now is happening in months and days and weeks. So you got to begin to say, okay, God, I'm going to do the natural and I'm believing for your super to come on it and to help accelerate this process. 
And the thing is, Satan is going to play on your minds at times and he'll try to come and make you think it's not working. Try to get a cut, a shortcut, try to do something a different way. And so now he'll get you bored with the process or frustrated with the process you're going through because you think it's not happening fast enough. And just because you don't see it in the natural does not mean it's not working in the spiritual stuff is working behind the scenes before you even realize more than you even realize God been doing stuff behind the scenes the whole time. But God is saying, don't stop the process. Now let's go to Ezekiel 36, Ezekiel 36. He says this verses 33 through 36. I'm going to, I'm going to start here today. Whew. Okay. He says, thus say of the Lord, thus say of the Lord God in the day that I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities, I will cause you to dwell in the cities and the waste shall be builded. The waste shall be builded or waste places and the desolate land shall be tilled. Whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all that passed by. So everybody that passed by, they saw how it looked. They saw how desolate the land looked. And they shall say this land um, that was desolate. Now watch this. This land that was desolate. I like this. I, you need to underline this. Highlight this. This land that was desolate is become like the Garden of Eden. And the waste and desolate and ruined cities are become fenced and are inhabited. Then the heathen that are left round about you shall know that I, the Lord, build the ruined places and plant that that was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken it and I will do it. And I want you to understand is that God gave us the blessing to restore. He gave us the blessing, the enablement, the empowerment for prosperity and success to restore old waste places, to turn it into the Garden of Eden, to cause areas wherever we go should be better than how we found it. Wherever we go, we should carry this grace and this anointing on us. Even that unbelievers will begin to see, wait a minute, we know that the Lord is with you because this place was desolate. This place was ruined. This place was run down. This place was ridden with crime. This place was ridden with poverty. This place was ridden with disease and, and infestations of all kinds. But now once you've come in, things have begun to change in the area of the community and the environment and you're building up. So wherever we go, we're to build, we're to grow, we're to develop. We're to increase. We're to make things better. We're to go into school systems and make things better for the administration, for the teachers, um, for the children. Wherever we go, things should be better. And you're supposed to have that mindset that wherever I go, the spirit of God, the spirit of grace, this blessing is on me to cause things to be better. Somebody say this, say, I have the blessing. I have the blessing. I am blessed. I am blessed by God. I am blessed to transform and change. I am blessed to increase. I am blessed to grow. I am blessed to develop. I have the mind of Christ. This blessing gives me ingenuity, creativity, innovation, ideas, concepts, witty inventions to get things done. God never gave a man a chair. He gave him wood. He never gave you an airplane. He gave you the raw materials. Listen, he gave us the raw materials and told us to take what he's given us, bless it, think about it. Think about what it can become. New ideas are going to birth through you. Watch this. Oh, that's good. Because watch this is going to be birthed out of love. You got to start checking your heart for the reason why you do things. See, if I give you something with strings attached, it means I have a wrong motive. If I'm given to be seen by men, scripture says you already got your reward. That's why he talks about don't let the left hand um, understand what the right hand is doing and that vice versa. Listen, sometimes people give and want everybody to see it. And it's like, sometimes like, why are you doing it? Are you doing it to make a name for yourself? Or are you doing it truly because you love the people you're giving to? And so sometimes even when you're giving to the poor, you need to be mindful to even protect the dignity of the people you're giving to. Listen, I've been on the other end of it when people, and I remember, I don't want to get into all that right now, but 
I was going to say a time where um, when my wife and I, we first got married and our children, the girl, I don't even think John Michael, had, he had been born yet. And I remember for one Christmas um, that we had a company that they adopted us as a family and sold into us and gave to us. And I remember when we went to the building to receive and they took a picture of us and everything, part of me, just as a man, I just, part of me felt ashamed that I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I wasn't producing like I should have been to take care of my family where we needed the help. Now I understand, I, I, I'm not talking about pride. So, you know, part of it was pride and I needed to learn how to receive. This is why too, you gotta learn how to receive because God wants to get you to another place and you're gonna have to learn how to receive. But then too, it made me more sensitive to people even when I sold into them. And sometimes, and I understand, they wanted the, the, the company to see where their giving went and things of that nature. But now you gotta understand what's the motive behind it? What's the motive behind what you're doing? What's the motive behind it? And when you have the right motive, you have the right actions. Because now out of a heart, because I love people, I want to give. Because I love God, I want to give. And see, not out of necessity, because God loves a cheerful giver. And so now he wants us to be cheerful and joyous in the things that we're doing. And watch this, compassion elevates or manifests the blessing and anointing to begin to accelerate and increase. Jesus was moved with compassion and healed people. What is your compassion? Where is your heart? Where is your drive? Look at, look at that thing within you. Some of you have a heart for the homeless. Some of you have a heart for people lacking education or proper books and, and proper things. That's your heart. That's your passion. Begin to, begin to acknowledge where your passion is, where your drive is. A lot of times that's where your grace is. That's where your provision is. And you'll begin to do it the right way and with the right heart because that's where your passion and your drive is. Somebody needs to hit it right now because now you begin to move in that area. And because now you got a heart to feed the homeless and to clothe the homeless and, and, and to visit people in prison and things of that nature, all of a sudden people will be drawn to support your efforts in that area because people will give to vision. They'll give to the thing that God has called you to do. So whatever it is, begin to stick with it. God is going to bring the help. The help is coming. The support is coming and I want you to be confident in that. Now I want to go real quick to Revelation chapter five, Revelation chapter five, Revelation chapter five. And there's a lot that I, I don't want to, I don't want to rush over this because I want to, I want this to sink in because what God is doing is transforming minds. This is part of the mind renewal. You just can't read a scripture one time and your mind is renewed to it. There's something about hanging around it over and over and over again because it begins to flush out the old way of thinking. And now you're beginning to think, wait a minute, wherever I'm called to be, I'm called to conquer in that area. Wherever God calls you, he's ready to invade. And he wants to get into that space and that place. And he wants to get you in there. And so you got to be ready to now accept the call, go into that area and begin to dominate in that area. But go in with the love of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God. And you going in with the power of God and you're going to transform and change things. This is why some of some people, some of you are called to the political arena. God wants you to understand how to function in the anointing so that you have an unction to function in every sphere of influence that he's called you in. You got to know how to tap into the power. You got to know how to tap into wisdom. When you're in a board meeting and all of a sudden now there's a project that comes up and nobody knows how to handle it, but you get off into a quiet time and begin to pray in tongues and draw up the wisdom of God and say, God, I want to draw on the spirit of innovation, this spirit of insight, wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Give me the answer that'll cause this company to go over. Give me the answer that'll produce a million dollar harvest, a multi-billion dollar harvest or profit or return. Give me the idea. I'm telling you, God will show you witty inventions, ideas. Listen, necessity is the mother of invention. There are things, there are necessities, there are needs that are there in the community and in the earth. And God has placed the answer in you. There's the seed of greatness in you, but you got to cultivate it and begin to walk in it. Some of you have a heart for people. I'm just going here. It is 
some of you have such a heart for people and you are saying to yourself, I know I have a heart for people, but in which way am I to serve? God, begin to show me. Begin to show me whatever it is that you can do to bless people. Some of y'all are so doggone creative, it don't make sense. You do it in your sleep. And God says, I want to take that and put you in industries where you can use that creativity. Some of you guys called to the arts, to, to entertainment, to the, uh, to the entertainment industry. He's called you to sing. He's called you to be executives. He's called you to be in these different spaces and places. And listen, your pulpit ain't in a church necessarily. For some of you, your pulpit is in that boardroom. Your pulpit is on that street corner. Your pulpit is in that organization. And God has graced you to walk in the fullness of it. And what he's going to begin to show you now in these upcoming days, you're going to begin to walk in such a level of confidence that I pray that the spirit of confidence and boldness come upon you. Listen, it was a Peter prayed that boldness would come upon him. It was a Paul that they prayed for boldness to preach the gospel. Boldness, 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 boldness to begin to open up your mouth and speak and share what you already know. Some of you think you, get, you need more training. Training, that's going to be good. We talked about developing your skill set, but some of you more trained and more developed than you realize. That you've walked in it so long that it's become second nature to you. And sometimes the thing that is second nature to you, you begin to minimize in your own eyes. Because it's so natural, you don't think it's exceptional. And you're exceptional at what you do. See, because it's normal to you, but it's extraordinary to everybody else. And then you even when they tell you, it's hard for you to receive it because you look at it as normal. You look at it as just, it's, it's just what I do. That, it, don't everybody do this? No, everybody don't do that. That's why God graced you. And then it's so normalized. And see, man, that's, that's it. That's it. Doggone it. You done normalized your greatness and don't realize how great you are. This is why God called me and said, awaken in them what I placed in them. Awaken in them and say, listen, you, you are good at what you do. You are great at what you do and you need to begin to walk in it. And I call doors to open for you to express your greatness now in Jesus name. I call exceptional doors to open for you to show who you are in Jesus name and let the fullness of everything that's in you come out in Jesus name, in Jesus name. You be, listen, I understand. Hear me when I say this. I understand you applauding other people, but you got to applaud yourself at some point. Stop having false humility where you talk down in yourself. You don't have to minimize yourself to build up others. You can speak well of yourself. The Bible says don't think more highly than you ought to think of yourself, but you ought to think highly. You got to recognize who you are. Stop walking in so low self-esteem. Stop walking with your head down. Walk with your head high. Decorate yourself. Adorn yourself and walk in some spaces now. Walk in some rooms and people going, watch this. You changed. You look different. The reason why I look different because I am different. I was looking at this, um, it was an interview. This thing just popped in my head. It was a basketball interview. I have a basketball game. And there were two players on this team. The team has been... I, I just said it was the Sacramento Kings and they have been on like the lower part of the totem pole in the NBA for a while. They used to have an exceptional organization and team, but lately they got a new coach. The new coach that came in this year has completely changed the whole culture. The team is winning and they, they beat this, um, this other team that was one of the top teams and the coach the, the interviewer asked two of the players on the Sacramento Kings, it was like, what happened when, um, when you recognized that the team that you played just added this new player who's supposed to be an exceptional player? And so I think that the person that was asking the question was expecting them to be like, well, yeah, you know, it's like to just give this high praise to the other people to diminish themselves. It was like, we don't focus on who they have. We focus on what we can do. Now, he using the... Um, some foul language and explain it. But he says, I don't care <laughs> who they have. We focus on what we can do. And I was like, that's what I'm talking about. The confidence. It's like, I'm not going to be intimidated because you're good at what you do. So what? I'm good at what I do. You, you, God is dealt with me. And, and I, listen, I'm navigating even through this myself with some things. 
there were things where it was almost like, wait a minute, show how good you are. You know who, what you, what you rolling with. Begin to express it, not in competitive jealousy, but begin to say, wait a minute, uh, uh-uh, I'm coming on the scene and I'm going to have the same attitude that I need to have the same. It's not to diminish anybody else, but I'm saying this, I love you. I want you to have your success. I ain't jealous of your success. I'm like, God, I just want my own. I want to be the best at what you call me to be and who you call me to be because I'm a king and a priest unto my God. And I declare that I walk exceptionally in this earth. And so anything around me got to rise up to that. And I declare that you rise up as to who you are in Jesus name. Stop, stop belittling. I mean, I sense this is like a agitation. It's like, whoo. The Holy Spirit gets agitated and annoyed when you talk down about yourself. That means he can't flow and produce through you because confidence activates the anointing. You better hear me. Confidence activates the anointing. When you confidently begin to speak, when you boldly say, because watch this, confidence breeds expectation. You're expecting things to, to work out. There are times I'll preach and I'll tell people this is going to happen. While I'm preaching, something's going to hit. It's an expectation. Expect it to work out right. What if you give the pitch and they accept it? You keep thinking about what if they don't? What if they do? Expect. Expect the multi-million dollar contract. Expect the new job. Go in expecting. Whereas you get interviewed, you turn into the interviewer. You start asking questions of the company. Where does the company plan to be in the next five years? How do you see my skill set being a part of this? This is what I see. Now, what do you see for me? Ask questions. Listen, listen interviewers, it trips them out when you start sw- switching things. You're coming in with such a boldness and confidence. This is going to exude from you. Now, people who are insecure get intimidated being around confident people. Because now you, you, it, it ignites your inadequacy. And God is saying, I want you to come out of that inadequacy. It's time for you to come out of insecurity and begin to believe who I said you are the whole time. I am the righteousness of God. So stop acting like you unrighteous. Stop walking around with this sense of guilt, this guilt complex and this shame. Wait a minute. I'm righteous. I know what I just did, but I'm righteous. So when I stay in my righteousness, the Bible says awaken unto righteousness and sin not. When you awaken to who you are, you will stop sinning. When you awaken to who you are, there are things you will start. You will stop doing and start doing. Because now, because my identity is set within me, my actions will naturally flow out of me of what righteous people do, which manifests itself, it says in 1 Corinthians 9, which manifests itself in act of goodness and kindness. When as the righteousness of God, I'm going to be actively good. I'm going to be actively kind. I'm going to be a giver. I'm going to be a a can do it person. I'm going to be the person who goes after the things of God. I'm going to be the person who invokes change in community. I'm going to be the person who invokes change in culture. I'm the person I'm going to transform and change my environment because wherever I am, God is because I'm an ambassador for God. I'm anointed by him. I'm empowered by him. I'm equipped by him. When I come into a room, the atmosphere shifts. It's time for that. Rise up, army of God, as to who you are. Mm -mm. You better hear what I'm telling you. And when, Lord, I can see, boy, I see it's like our team going into areas, and we come in with a kingdom swagger. This is who we are. We go into a community. This is who we are. We go into the school. This is who we are. This is who we are. Rise up, people. Listen, I'm telling you, when you go in, Satan hates that. Man, I sent something. He said, I hate, uh, it's, it's like hell screams at the talk of righteous men and women who know who they are. It's like it's a disruption in the spirit realm to them. They don't know what to do with it. 
Yeah, Lord, man, glory to God. Glory to God. Now watch this. Um, I think I'm going to end up ending here right now for, to, for today. Because next week I'm probably going to talk to you about the word of the kingdom. The word of the kingdom. I want to I'm 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 end here in Revelation 5. Revelation chapter 5 verses 11 through 12. Because God gave us this blessing to restore. We are blessed beyond measure. We are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed in Jesus' name. I am blessed. You are blessed. I want you to say that. Say, I have the blessing. I am blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I am blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm not in poverty. I'm in prosperity. I'm not in lack. I'm in abundance. And my abundance is a supply to those who are in lack. I don't hoard it for myself. I'm graced by God to not only have all things created for me richly to enjoy, I enjoy my life and I see others enjoy their lives because I'm a catalyst for change everywhere I go. I'm a conduit for change. I'm a conduit for the blessing to flow. Wherever I go, God is. Amen. Wherever I go, God is. I listen, I make my mark in this earth that can never be erased. Listen, when I leave this earth to go see the Lord, listen, if Jesus tarry, and listen, I'm telling you, if he tarries and I go by the way of the grave, I'm telling you now, I want it to be known that when this man, Mike May, lived on this planet, he made a mark that could never be erased. I Listen, Pastor Dahl used to say this thing like this, if your church was to shut down, would your community miss it? I remember we moved from an area and it was like the children in that area missed us when we left because we were making impact in their lives. But listen, we're going to make impact in this city. Listen, we can pass to this city. We can listen, pass to this city and surrounding counties. I know, listen, anybody else can have the same desire. But listen, listen oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I remember God told me that word when he told us to go into the prisons. And I said, Lord, everybody in the same place, everybody, you know, fishing in the same pond. And he said this, I, I never forget it. The Holy Spirit said, but everybody doesn't have your voice. Everybody ain't me. Everybody ain't you. See, see that type of stuff, that type of talk, man, it can sound cocky in, in, in some people's ears. Like, wait a minute, you, you don't have what I have because there's only one me. There's only one you. Nobody has my fingerprint. Only I have it. Come on now. You better hear me. There's only one me. And when God made it, he broke the mold. Same way with you. You are unique. You are unique. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Stop diminishing. Stop telling yourself, I have nothing to give. What, who, who am I? I'm nobody. You better stop talking about God's creation like that. What you mean you're nobody? You made a mark. You a mother. You a father. You an aunt and uncle, a brother, a sister, a nephew, a niece, whatever it is. You are created by God. You are God's image. You are God's reflection in the earth. I'm speaking to somebody right now. You keep diminishing who you are and you better rise up. You have a better life ahead of you. God told you he wants you to live life in abundance to the full till it overflows in Jesus name. Jesus said, I am come that you might have life. The Zoe life, the God kind of life, the abundant living of God. I speak abundant increase of favor over you. I declare that El Shaddai, the many breasted one, the God of all sufficiency, the God of all supply is visiting your house right now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. The words that I speak are spirit and they are life and they are coming over the airways, coming through that internet, through your phone, through your device, wherever you are. I declare God's life in you. I, listen, you better rise up off of that deathbed. You better rise off of that bed of affliction. I rebuke the spirit of infirmity now in Jesus name. You take your hands off of their bodies. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You hear me? I take authority. Of, you need to say that somebody that you sitting there, you in pain now you need to speak. I command my body to be well. Yeah. Red body. It's been chronic chronic who Lord I take authority over it now chronic blessing <laughs> residual blessing the blessing on you 
I declare it in Jesus' name. Somebody shout, I have the blessing. Tell, listen, tell yourself, I have the blessing. I have the blessing. I have the blessing. I'm a, let, me, let me, okay, I'm, I'm, let me, okay, Re Revelation 5, 11 through 12 says this, And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beast and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands and thousands, saying, with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Yeah, yeah. And we are part of that. We are in Christ and Christ lives in us. This is part of our inheritance package. Yeah. To receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor, and glory, and blessing. <sighs> Listen, you can be a partaker of the power, of the riches, and the wisdom. Hey, yeah, so la bosso comba. Yeah, oh, oh, ha. Huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. You suppose, yeah. You're supposed to walk in this. You're supposed to walk in divine power. The Holy Ghost has come upon you and shall be within you, and he lives in you. And you also to walk in riches. Wealth and riches shall be in your house. He's given us the ability to obtain wealth to establish his covenant in the earth. It is not an evil thing for you to have money and plenty of it and plenty of resources and wisdom, wisdom, the ability to apply the knowledge that you're receiving, the information that you're receiving. God is giving you information, revelation, so that now there can be application. Strength, inward strength and outward strength, strength to endure until change comes. You are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You can make it. Some of you had that grief, that that thing has been hounding you. No, you have strength to overcome. You will come through this. There's light at the other side. Listen, not just at the end of the tunnel. There's light manifesting now in Jesus' name. Light drives out darkness. Darkness cannot drive out light, but light drives out darkness. You better hear me. Darkness is the absence of light. When light shows up, darkness has to leave. It's automatic. They can't occupy the same space. I speak light and life to you. This is why I'm speaking to you. Some of you, as you just listening, energy, strength is coming. Honor. Ooh, this the spirit of honor. Well, people will deal honorably with you. Watch this. But you have to make a decision to deal honorably with people. Do what's right because it's right and do it right and treat people right. And glory, glory, God's manifested goodness and his blessing, the empowerment for prosperity and success in all of its capacity. I declare this sevenfold blessing. This, listen, this seven, I'm t the seven spirits of God, even mentioned in, in, in Isaiah uh, 11, talking about now these seven manifestations here in Revelation. We're talking about this thing. It's something about that number seven. It's something about, listen, we talk about even the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge and understanding, this, the fear of the Lord, the revelation knowledge of God, the spirit of might, these things manifesting to you by the spirit of God. You are to manifest this. Listen, you have to expect this. You, you have to draw on it. You have to speak it over yourself. You have to declare it. And God, I say things like this in your prayer time. Father, I ask you to manifest. Now watch this. Oh, Lord. Whatever you ask him in his name, in Jesus' name, he said he'll give it to you. But I want you to hear this. The Holy Spirit has already been given in the earth. And these are manifestations of the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. If you have received the Holy Spirit, watch this. The potential for the manifestation of these things already abides in you. And you can draw on and call on these manifestations to come forth. I draw on the spirit of wisdom. I draw on the spirit of knowledge. I draw on the spirit of understanding. 
If my comprehension was crazy in the beginning, it's hard for me to understand and comprehend things. The spirit of understanding can come upon me where I begin to know and comprehend things that was hard for me to understand in the beginning, that your eyes will be open to see. And when I pray in the spirit, it stirs up, agitates these gifts to manifest. Le roba shekando, le rimando kum refresete kene, le ramando shokona. I draw on the spirit of wisdom now. That when I go into a meeting, I have the answer. That while everybody is struggling, I do it without stress, struggle, or strain. I declare wisdom. I declare wisdom. Listen, team. Listen, Spirit of Fire partners and supporters and members. Listen. When we come together and we strategize the spirit of wisdom, we will draw on this spirit, draw on this anointing to say answers come, multi-million dollar, billion dollar ideas, things that grow and increase. And as you go into your areas to oversee areas of influence and increase, whether it's in the ministry, outside of the ministry, that you are grace to serve. When you submit to that vision, when you submit to the vision, God will anoint you just like he did with Moses when he laid hands on the people, watch this, and anointed them to serve. And they had understanding in areas they didn't have understanding in before. I believe that the anointing can come upon you to oversee an area that you've had no skill set in in the past. Okay, you better hear me. <laughs> that God will give you ideas to come up with stuff. Just because you have the right heart, God says, I can get you the information and the understanding. And because you have the right character to oversee it and you ain't going to mess up the organization and you ain't going to have some hidden agenda or try to disrupt it to start your own thing and pull on the resources of the place God called you to serve in. Listen, be faithful over the little. I'll make you ruler over much. If you be faithful, you'll connect with this anointing and it'll begin to flow through you. And there'll be such great ideas and the spirit of innovation that keeps coming up in my spirit, the spirit of innovation to take what you have and multiply it exceedingly. In Jesus name. And I'm gonna get ready to stop here. I, man, you better hear me. I let remind the rest of my glory to God. You have in you the greater one, the greater one, the greater one, the greater one, the greater. Stop minimizing. I, I, I got a comment, so I'm ready to smash this table almost. Hear me. Because it's, oh, it's been agitating my spirit. When we as believers have a preaching natural, it's like living beneath. Living beneath and not tapping into the fullness. If God said it, why not believe for it? If Jesus healed the maim and he gave you the same authority and power, why not believe for the maim to be healed or the dead to be raised? Why not build your faith up in these areas to be the best at what you're called to be? It's time. This message of the kingdom is going into the earth to raise up men and women in the earth. I'm telling you. Everywhere we go, the kingdom is ambassadors for the kingdom. In every school system, hospitals, offices, Fortune 500 companies, playgrounds, gymnasiums. I don't care wherever you are, God is. The blessing is on you. Systematic harvest and structure is going to be. <laughs> Lord, help me, help me articulate what I'm feeling in my spirit. It's like there's such this structure. You got to get the solid structures and systems going now. You have to get them going now. You have to set the meetings up with people now, even if it's find a good you know, you know, a good financial advisor, or you got to learn even like, even in there, a fiduciary, a person who's obligated for your best interest, required by law to invest for your best interest and not the company's. 
Things like that, studying to show yourself approved unto God. A workman who needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. There has to be structure, order, discipline, development, consistency. And there's a drive and there's an energy that comes with it. There'll be days that you'll be tired, but there'll be days that you'll be energized to work. And for some of you, you need to develop spurts of strategic um, work and development. Whether it's a hard couple of weeks that you go hard and then you rest a week or two and then you go back hard again. Or for some, just consistently light work that increases over time because it begins to build your energy. Whatever the structure is that God begins to give you, there has to be consistency in these areas where you begin to develop and you begin to de develop and you begin to grow. And so things will begin to multiply and increase. And so there'll be steady spikes and you go from the one talent man to the two talent man to the five talent man. And you you're going to begin to increase your capacity to receive more from God because you're increasing your ability to handle more that God is going to entrust you with more start where you are start in your home start being a good steward in your home where your money is concerned where your children is concerned your family your marriage is concerned be a good steward be intentional in developing what's around you Make your home a great place to live. Set the atmosphere, get rid of the clutter, set the mood, set the tone, set the tempo. Get up early in the morning or rise up late at night and begin to speak well over your house. Begin to declare and to decree. Set an atmosphere of even setting worship music in your home where it sets an atmosphere for you to begin to hear from heaven. And God will begin to download things into your spirit and have a pen and a pad or a recording device ready to capture the ideas when they come. Because my ideas will begin to flow. I'm telling you, God's the ideas are flowing. They are flowing. It's like a frequency already going out into the earth. And just like when you turn a radio to capture the frequency that's already out there, it captures the airwaves, the radio waves to transmit the message to you. God has already released things into the earth, but now we got to tune in to his frequency. And as we begin to hear and get in the place in the spirit, you'll start hearing more. You'll start receiving more. The stress will begin to leave you because a divine plan will be downloaded in you. And you'll begin to see and to know where you need to go and what you need to do and how you need to do it. And so it'll begin to relieve great stress. And because your body's been under heavy attack from the stress that you've been enduring, watch this, when the peace comes, the repair comes. The repair in your body. Your body is going to begin to amend. Some of you are experiencing it right now. Your body, even as peace has come, there will be an amending, amending, a healing of your physical body. Some of you have been so traumatized by stuff in the past, you've never acknowledged it. And God is going to bring some of that stuff up so you can acknowledge it, get rid of it, and the healing will take place just like that. The healer in the name of Jesus. So I receive it, receive it. I, I bless you in Jesus name. I, I bless you. I bless your homes. I bless your work. I bless all that you do. May the trauma be healed now in Jesus name, in Jesus name, in Jesus name. See, when the anointing is flowing, I ain't got to sweat hard. He's flowing. I ain't got to feel anointed. The word is anointed. As the word is ministered, healing comes. I speak healing over traumatic situations. The enemy will not hound you. Now listen, you got to stand up to him because he a bully. He goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. When those thoughts come, you take authority over and say, I cast that thought down in Jesus' name. I am already healed because the word of God says I'm healed. No, you're not because you're still feeling this. See, stop lying. Listen, don't let the symptoms lie to you. You are healed. You speak your freedom. You speak your healing. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Yeah. Yeah. The more you resist, the stronger you become in it. I resist this. And be proactive. Begin to speak daily before the enemy even comes because you know what he's going to come at you with. Start speaking the answer before he ever shows up. And what you're doing is you're building strength and resistance in that area. So when the attack comes, you're so strong in it. It's like water off a duck's back. It flows and you will find it easier and easier. The more you resist and stay in the presence of God, stay in the word of God, the more, the easier it is to resist the wicked one. He has no authority over you. He has no power over you. You are so great. You are so great. Strong in the Lord. Glory to God and in the power of his life. Listen, money coming to you because you're a producer of wealth. 
It comes to you with ease. It's an easy thing for you to make plenty of money. It's an easy thing for you to manage your life well. It's an easy thing in Jesus' name. Jesus said, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. Everybody else, it's just hard. Life is hard. The way of the transgressor is hard. Listen, Jesus said, in this world, you're going to have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Why? Because I've overcome the world. He already overcame it. He just wants us to believe it and walk in the power of what he already provided for us. He said, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Stop letting stuff rob you of your joy and your cheer. Be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Listen, I remind myself of this. Uh, be of good cheer. I'm not easily agitated. That's going to be my new confession. I am not easily agitated or irritated. Because I kept speaking and I had to catch myself. That irritates me. That irritates me. Stop speaking irritation. I walk in great peace. Nothing bothers me. Nothing bothers me because I walk in great peace. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Oh, that's impossible. Some, it's going to trouble you somewhere. Something's going to trouble you. Something gonna, Jesus, listen, he said, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. That's a commandment. Why are he going to tell you to do something he didn't give you the ability to do? See, I'm telling you, I don't care what preacher says it. Let God be true in every man alive. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Either I can accept the agitation or reject it. I can accept the fear or reject it. I have that authority and power. Am I going to let this bother me or I'm going to walk in joy? I was talking to somebody just yesterday and I had to spend some money for something. And I was like, and it was, I was telling them something that was going on. And I was like, you know what? I said, I really didn't want to have to spend the money and blah, blah, blah. But then I said this, I said, but I'm glad I had the money. I said, I'm glad that I had the money to spend. And she looked at me, she's like, you know what? That's a great outlook, a great perspective to have. <laughs> I said, you know what? In the midst of it, even though I didn't want to have to do it or whatever, it's like, wait a minute. I got the, I have the ability to change my perspective in this situation and then say, God, I call in the money to replace and replenish what was spent in Jesus name. And then go from here. Uh, -uh I'm going to get to a place. Uh, uh, it's time now. It's time now to have the structure to say, okay, this, uh, let me, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We thank you. We bless you. Now, there may be somebody out there who's never made Jesus the Lord of your life. The Bible talks about this salvation, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead. The Bible says you shall be saved. Born again, you will have eternal life. I want you to know there's a literal place called heaven. There's a literal place called hell. And Jesus died so you wouldn't have to go to hell. Hell was not created for man. It was created for Satan and his angels. And when at the fall, listen, when Satan led a rebellion in heaven against God, the Bible says a third of the angels fell with him. He said, Jesus said it like this, I beheld Satan fall like lightning. Watch this, watch this. Hell was not created for us. It was created for Satan and his angels. And Satan now, who is the, the deceiver, he came into the Garden of Eden, deceived Adam and Eve. They took of the forbidden fruit. We understand this whole thing got started because of that. The sin nature and all of that stuff, separation from God. Jesus came. Jesus died to restore and reconnect us back to God. This is what's called the ministry of reconciliation. This is why we preach this, that Jesus died for the sins of the world. Your sins have all been, been paid for. People, always, people say things like salvation is free. No, salvation is not free. A price had to be paid, but Jesus paid the price. You and I are just recipients of it. He paid it. He paid the penalty for all of our sin. All you got to do is believe what he did and accept it. And the Bible says you're born again. Acknowledge what he did. Some people don't want to acknowledge what he did, acknowledge him as the Christ, the son of the living God. But for you today, I want you to acknowledge him. 
through the confession of your faith and the believing in your heart. The Bible says you shall be born again. I want you to make this confession of your faith or pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I make you the Lord of my life. Mm -hmm. Say, Satan, I no longer belong to you. Jesus is my Lord. And I'll serve only him all the days of my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. I'm born again. I have eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, born again, you have eternal life. We want to acknowledge that. Welcome to the family of God. Welcome, 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 welcome. Listen, that's you and this is your first time accepting and making that confession of your faith and praying that prayer of faith. We want to acknowledge you. We want to say, hey, I would, if you say, hey, I acknowledge Jesus as my Lord and I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I want to learn more about him. We want to help you. We want to help disciple you. We want to help you learn how to develop this thing, this, this relationship with God through his son Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. We want to teach you. We want to train you. We want to help develop you in these things. And so if that's you, we want to acknowledge you and uh, help you along in this path. If there are those that you don't have a church home, I recommend this church to you. If you're in this area, whether it's locally, but also globally, if you want to be a part of our e-church community and family, we have members that are in other states. And we listen, you can connect with us as well. We thank God for you. We want you to be a part of the Spirit of Fire family. And we want to help push you into your destiny purpose and your, the destination for your life. So if that's you, you can send us an email or message us. An email is coming up on your screen. You can email us at connect at spiritoffire.us. Connect at spiritoffire.us. And so you can also message us through our social media platforms, um, Spirit of Fire Fellowship, and we will be happy to assist you and to help you. Praise God. Well, y'all, at this time, we want to honor God in our giving. Um, there's information that's coming up on your screen. We call it Opportunity for Prosperity, and we want to sow. We want to give. And so what's up with, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to sow myself. As you give, the Bible says it'll be given to you again. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. God will cause men to give unto your bosom. He said, but with the same measure that you need, it shall be measured to you again. And so if you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. If you sow bountifully, you will reap bountifully. So even with sparingly dealing with dollar amount, but also frequency. If you give every now and again, then that's how you receive every now and again. But we want to get into a rhythm of giving so that also we have a rhythm of receiving a harvest as well. And so it's something about doing it with the right heart, the right attitude. God loves a cheerful, joyous, and prompt to do it giver whose heart is in their giving. And he says, I'll make all grace abound towards you, that you have an all sufficiency in all things do abound in every good work. So we're believing God for that abundant harvest of God's grace, his goodness upon your life, that he'll increase your resources for giving. And he'll make sure you have plenty to eat, that you have plenty to live off of, plus you have plenty to sow and to give into others' lives as well. Praise God. So at this time, information is coming up on your screen as to how you can give. And so there's a QR code that you can scan. It'll take you to a secure page on our uh, website. Uh, we promise you that it's not sold to third party entities, things of that nature, that it's a secured site where you can give. And so and so it'll go towards the work of the ministry. And so we thank God for you. We thank God for what uh, you're sowing, you're giving, your consistency in doing so. And so we want to make a mark that can never be erased. Amen. All right, y'all. Well, I am, I say out of time, but certainly not out of message. And so one of the things I, I definitely, um, want to do is I want to release you with the blessing, what we call our benediction, where I speak the word of the Lord over you and I'm expecting you to receive it. I want you, if you're able to, wherever you are, lift up your hands. I declare now God's great favor, God's great grace, ideas, concepts, ideas, everything that needs to come to show you what to do, how to do, the resources to get it done, the right people. I declare that you are now going to begin to maneuver in the right places at the right times, meeting the right people and making right connections. In Jesus' name, amen. 
God bless you all. Love you guys. Well, we here at Spirit of Fire Fellowship are changing the culture, igniting a passion, and living the dream. And now, like I like to say, we want to bring them in, raise them up, and send them out into the earth to do great exploits for the kingdom of God. God bless you all, and I'll see you next time. Peace. <laughs>